Because so, it didn't have to stay cold. There was really no milk to speak of in it, so you didn't have to worry that it was going to spoil. You know. Right. That I don't know. And I, think, I remember it. I, thought, I remember it being in a can. It was in a bottle and in a can. Well, they wouldn't let you bring yeah, well, glass I bottles. Allowed, I wasn't allowed to bring the bottle to school. We were only allowed to have the can. I know. It had to be plastic or a can. Right. Yeah, I don't remember you not being refrigerated. I always thought it, was it had to be refrigerated. Oh, no, it was always refrigerated, but I mean, if it stayed out, there was nothing I believe it was made with it. I believe it's like all milk. I don't know. I mean, we could look it up. That would be really silly. Does you who oh, okay, have to be refrigerated? To do that. By the way, we're supposed to talk about politics. They just showed uh, Obama and uh, Putin shaking hands and barely even looking at each oh, other. Oh, they look like they hated each other. You know. They definitely look like they they hated each other. Well, you I know, think, I think they're supposed to meet again tomorrow face to face, so we'll see what happens. Unless they did already. I I don't re I don't remember. I thought that was just today. It's very possible. Yeah, they did I mean, meet I, today. And they looked at each other, and, and they had that drink. Oh, that was it. Right, the champagne or whatever it was. They sort of averted each other's look. Yeah, they didn't look like they didn't look like they liked each other too much. But they know not to like each other. And I tell you, he put had a good interview in sixty minutes. He really well, did. you know, they they asked him, you know, about American politics, and he said, "Look, I'm not going to comment on American the, the the races or anything like that." He said, "That's for the American people." Uh, but as I said to Felix when the show first started, he did say, when asked about does Bashar al-Assad should he be replaced, and he said, "Well, you have to be careful who you're replacing him with." And the bottom line is, right now, uh, he's the lesser of the evils. We really don't know who would be replacing him. Yeah, so this... I mean, before you take him out of out of uh, out of look, there's no disputing that he's committed atrocities against his own people. But unless you have somebody waiting in the wings and you have some sort of a government set up. You're just going to have chaos like you did in Iraq. And every country in the Middle East. And and uh, in Libya. Okay. Yemen. That's all you're going to have. The only ones that stay together are Jordan. They have a king. You know, one of the generals. Saudi Arabia, they have kings. You know, they're not the. One of the generals, one of the American generals said, you know, America has. Uh, is very knowledgeable in getting into war and achieving its its purpose and goal, but they never have an exit strategy, and that's that's the problem. There is no exit. So before, I mean, Bush had no exit strategy in in Iraq. He had no entry strategy either. That was a complete farce, anyway. Oh, here's a good one. He hits from both sides of the plate. He's amphibious. <laughs> that it's it was important to get the conversation going. Everybody was talking too much. Everybody was talking too much and saying nothing. Oh, here's a compliment. I'm just to trying. Here's a I'm compliment. just trying to keep my strength up. <laughs> Yeah, how That's are you feeling, by the way? How guys. are you feeling? Huh? How are you feeling? Not good. But I don't, I'm not... Well, you sound, you sound not extremely tired. You know, you sound uh, pretty much wasted. I'm, no very, I'm very extremely tired today. Um, and I'm noticing that every day it's getting... Worse and worse. Well, what does your doctor um, say? Well, I have to. I, they weren't there today. They'll be in tomorrow, so I'm going to call them again tomorrow. 
Um, I mean, I woke up okay this morning. I didn't really feel tired, tired. I mean, I did my morning routine. I woke her up to walk to the school. But when I came home, I just, like, started to feel, like, sluggish. And then it just hit me. My, uh, like, I couldn't... I couldn't make a fist. My body just felt like it was caving See, in. Alisa, um, listen to you. My joints were hurting. Listen to yourself. This was the person who said, I'm going to go crazy being at home. I got to find work. And I said, well, be very careful because right now you're at on disability. And once you give that up, it's very hard to get it back. And look at what's happening. You're falling apart. I know. Basically. You know, well, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just hoping that it's just like nothing. That maybe I'm overexerting myself lately. I would call um, you doctor. I, I mean, it definitely is. The sh I mean, the doctor did forewarn me last month when I, you know, right before I started the the shot. He said that it's gonna break your immune system down. You know, you are gonna, you know, you you're gonna become slower than usual, um, but I just didn't expect it, you know, I expected it to happen sooner than now, I guess because the, whatever the humara is made up of, I guess it does take several weeks, I mean, I keep in mind, I don't do it every day, I don't do it every week, I do it every other week, um, and I only do one shot, and it's not a, I don't think it's a heavy dose that I take. So I guess by not doing it as often, it takes time to, I guess, get into the system. And now that it is, I mean, this, this Wednesday, I think will be my sixth round. So I'm just, I don't know. I just feel, you know, when you're, how many shots do when you have to get? Nine? Huh? How many shots do you have to get? Is it nine? I only get one, one shot. No, you when said I this is your started, sixth round. The first day I started, I had to do four shots, then two shots, then one shot. So are you finished? So I just... What? Are you finished? No, I got to do this for the rest of my life. Well, you said you got four shots, two shots, one shot. So now you're down, you just get one shot a week now, right? I'm down to one shot every other week. Every other week. Right. So this Wednesday, I get a shot. And then... Well, that could be why at you... At the end of the week... the end of the week, I call and I get my... I, I call in for my shots. And they send me... Two shots next week to prepare for the week after. All right, they always so, just send two shots per, okay, per well, this month is, or whatever. This is the tail end of the last shot, so that may be why you're tired. Do you usually feel better when you get the shot, you know, when you get the shot and it's fresh the first few days? You're feeling good? No, well, the the day of the shot, I don't feel anything. It's come Friday morning, two days after, or really three days after, I start feeling tired. Like my weekends are shot. The the weeks that I get the shot, my weekends are um laying on the couch or laying in bed. Is it supposed to make you tired? The shots. Um, he said that it could, um, again, he said that once I start the shot that it, my immune system breaks down. Um, I have to watch out, you know, if I get a fever, I have to call him immediately and tell him and I got to let him know how high the fever is. Um, if, um, if like. If I can't handle, because there are times when my joints are hurting me, um, and if that happens and like I can't 
move, I have to call him immediately and tell him. Uh, luckily, that hasn't happened. I mean, yeah, I mean, there, every now and then, I can feel my joints hurting me. Like, there are times, like I said, I can't uh, open or close my fist. Um, but it's very rare that that happens. But it's just the tiredness. It's extre- I'm like extremely, I feel like my body is literally shutting down on me. Oh. You call the doctor tomorrow, right? I'm calling the doctor again tomorrow, yes. All right, good. Well, you'll keep us informed. I'm sure you'll post After on... You- I'm sure you'll post on Facebook, well, you know. Probably, yeah. yeah. Um, but one then, other thing that I had today that I must tell him about is I broke out into a sweat. So I don't know if maybe I just worked myself up or because it was hot. I mean, I walking from walking from the house to the school and then back to the school, it was kind of hot today. It was a warm day. Yeah. Exceptionally, yeah. You know, in fact, <laughs> I happened to remark. I said, over the weekend, I packed away all my summer stuff, with the exception of a few T-shirts. I said, I have no more shorts out. You know, all I just have jeans, and uh, it was warm. I my tell shorts you, was warm. stay. My shorts stay out for at least another month. They, mine used to stay out through October, but uh, when we had that little bit of a cool spell, I figured, ah, eh, what the hell? I might as well do it. Nah. And, uh, anyway. Anyway, I, have I don't even know how to dress the mantra right now in the mornings to go to school because it could be chilly in the morning, but then when I go to get her in the afternoon, it's like a thousand degrees out. Yeah. Now, uh, did we talk about the Pope at all before we go off to the air? I think we did. Uh, well, you said that. Well, he's. You know, one thing he said yesterday that really, really. It, it it took to me was when he said how he was moved when he was at ground zero and how there's such evil, like you could feel the evil there. And he was a hundred right on target when he said that. Well, sure. And he, and he said he was also moved by all the different re- religious people that were there. You know, I, I yeah. said to, I said to Felix earlier. I said uh, he's finally setting up a, a committee to uh, examine the uh, abuse. abuse, the child abuse done, perpetrated by uh, Catholic priests in America. And he said nothing is going to be swept under the table. He said names and heads are going to roll. He promises that. He said there's no room for that in the Catholic Church Um, because I know he met with some survivors of uh, of abuse, of sexual abuse by priests. Um, He did say that he was against the ordination of nuns to become priests and uh, marriage is still a man and a woman, although as Felix said, which, you know, the, the Pope said many times, who am I to judge? You know, he passes no judgment on uh, gay couples. They have a right to be right. happy. He's not gonna, let's face it, he's not going to turn his, you know, he's not going to turn against that, but he's not going to be for it either. I mean, let's face it, well, Catholic, in the Catholic religion, they only believe in one belief and that it should be right. man and woman. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying, I'm not saying that it's right. I mean, there you. Nobody has the right to judge anybody. Um, I believe that if you love somebody, no matter what you are, you could be uh, two women, two men. You could be a man, a horse. It doesn't. You can't. You can't tell someone that they can't love somebody, and you can't tell someone that they can't marry you can't someone tell somebody you, you because can't. you well, believe it differently. Yeah, you can't well, tell that, someone who well, to love. <laughs> actually, did you hear about that guy? We're talking about man in a horse. A guy in the, I think in South Carolina or something, paid somebody so he could have sex with an animal, and it was a police thing, and they arrested him. Well, I mean that's that's ridiculous. That's absurd. 
But, but uh, it's the truth. So it I'm not po- saying it's not true. I mean, what what cop is going to 